Welcome back. It's now been four days since the devastating EF5 tornado tore through Moore, Oklahoma. And as the residents begin the long journey of recovery, there are still questions to be answered. The Weather Channel will be airing a one-hour chronicle called the Oklahoma Tornado Tragedy, a Weather Channel special presentation. Joining us now is the Weather Channel's Mike Bettis. Mike, thanks for joining us. It's good to talk to you. Well, first, I'd like to talk about the rarity of this event. The last EF5 tornado to hit Oklahoma was two years ago. Even in Tornado Alley, a tornado of this strength is rare. What was special about the atmospheric conditions on Monday that came together to produce such a strong tornado? What just ended up being all the right atmospheric ingredients uh, culminating at one specific location on the south side of Oklahoma City. We had the very strong uh, upper level jet stream energy uh, coming in from the west and the southwest. And then we had very strong moisture pool coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. And with those two in combination, what we ended up getting was this turning of wind with height and moisture with these building thunderstorm clouds. And the next thing you know, we're dropping a massive tornado in a very populated area. And we've also seen the pictures. I mean, just heartbreaking to see 13,000 homes mowed down by this more than mile wide tornado. And Mike, why was the tornado initially rated an EF4, but later bumped to an EF5? Well, initially, Na National Weather Service meteorologists were looking at the video that was very uh, real-time and prevalent. And so they could tell from the video itself uh, just how strong and violent the winds were, and they do that based on damage assessments. Now, once the tornado had passed and their survey teams got out into the field and could inspect the damage firsthand, there were specific things that they noticed that caused this to be rated an EF5 with winds between 200 and 210 miles per hour. It was damage at an elementary school, and it was very large oil tank that had been thrown about a half a mile. This thing weighed several tons. It was picked up and thrown a half a mile into a neighborhood, and that was the specific damage that caused them to rate this an EF5. And do you believe the people of the communities affected were given enough time to find adequate shelter? I do. Uh, the lead time on the warning here was roughly 16 minutes or so, which should be enough time for someone to, to find a safe shelter. In some instances, though, the only place you could be to be safe was underground. A lot of folks here have storm shelters, and a lot of uh, survivor stories we've heard, they were underground. Uh, if you were maybe in a bathroom, you had a chance, but we've noticed that many homes don't even have a single wall standing anymore. So there was such violence at this, with this one. Uh, we think that the loss of life was reduced somewhat because people are aware of weather here, they had lead time on it, and they were able to get underground. All right, Mike, and finally, what can our viewers expect to see during the special tonight? Well, I think it's going to be a pretty special hour of TV. You know, if you're fascinated by weather, you're going to have a fascinating view of the days leading up to this tornado, the severe weather that occurred before this tornado, even the days before we had very violent tornadoes. And then a look at the life cycle of the Moore, Oklahoma tornado from its inception to its 1.3 mile wide track and then its eventual dissipation, the stories of search and rescue and people being pulled out of rubble, people emerging from their storm shelters with nothing more than the shirts on their backs. I mean, some things that you just can't see every day. So I hope you can join us tonight. It's 9 o'clock Eastern for the Weather Channel special Oklahoma Tornado Tragedy. Something very unique uh, tonight on our network. All right. Thanks, Mike, so much.